five senses, sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. It's how we experience our surroundings, how we connect with the people and the places around us. For some years now, a project called Let Nature Feed Your Senses has been offering visits to farms and nature reserves right across England. But these aren't just any old visits to the countryside. Far from it. These sensory-rich visits are enjoyed by people who don't have easy access to farms and nature reserves. Children from inner city schools, people with learning disabilities or sensory impairments, older people with dementia. They get to see, hear, smell, touch and taste the wonders of the countryside. So let's meet some of the people who've enjoyed such visits. This is Sharon. She lives at home with her family near the south coast and attends a day project that encourages people with learning disabilities to actively participate in the community. She has twice visited a local dairy farm with the group and just loves being there. She has her own uh, unique way of interacting with some of the herd. Stay. Listen. All right. Calm down. Calm. It's a bit so tall. It's a bit strange. Never, never. When I go home tonight, I'm going to tell my mum about this tractor. <laughs> Let nature feed your senses. Visits are planned around the needs of each individual group of visitors. Witty bits from the wheat and the shreddies. Props yeah. such as old books photographs and farm tools, even a tea party with china cups, not only make visits more enjoyable, but allow people to revisit past experiences. Look at these cows, all having babies, darling. These cows, all having babies, darling. Not now, but not, not this minute, hopefully. They can rekindle happy memories and associations with the past, particularly for people who have dementia. On her visit, Doreen, like many other elderly visitors, enjoyed reminiscing about her wartime experiences living on a farm. First of all, it was the bombs, and then it was the Google bombs, and when I got evacuated, I stayed in a little village outside, not far from Bodmin. There were not many sheep, no, mostly cows. It was, yeah. a, it was a milk farm, okay. a dairy farm, I should say. Yeah. So you used to walk the dogs around. <laughs> <laughs> it's great that you've, you've come out today and that you can... It's lovely, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Back to old times for me. <laughs> <laughs> lovely to meet such nice gentlemen. Some of the ways a farm visit can feed the senses are listening to nature, like cows chomping on their feed, touching grain and letting it run through the fingers, or stroking young animals, tasting pancakes cooked in the open air, topped with homemade jams and cream. Drinking milk on a dairy farm. Or simply watching sheep. And of course, there's the smell. Every farm has a rich collection of smells and aromas, not always so appealing. There's nowhere more sensory rich than a farm. And the benefits of a well-organised, active visit run by a trained and experienced host are enormous. An evaluation by the University of Essex into the impact of sensory-rich visits concluded that the well-being of many of those taking part had actually improved as a result. The benefits of the residents, a lot of them have, you know, a history of being uh, with families in the countryside and everything. Some were women's land army people and a lot of the men worked on farms. And it's, it's not only healthy, it's also good for reminiscing for people with dementia because it brings back the happy times in their lives. And it can actually bring peacefulness to them. It, it helps them sleep better, so it enables the home to run better and just to be out there and be free. So, what can you do? Well, the answer is simple. Get involved. If you're working in healthcare or with a community group, think about organising a sensory visit. In that way, people can explore nature, food and farming in a safe environment and in a way that can build confidence and do wonders for their well-being. It's been profound, it's changed my life in lots of ways, to the fact that now we've um, been able to approach a funder that's been helping us for the last few um, months and tell him about Let Nature Feed Your Senses and, and the work that we've been doing, especially around bread making. And they are considering now funding us in quite a major way. 
If you're part of a company or a club or an organisation, you can support the visits in other ways. For instance, by helping with funding, with volunteering. And my daughter's uh, disabled, so she's uh, quadriplegic, so she has to be carried or wheeled in a wheelchair. So she's carried on my back, which enables us to walk on the farm trails. So she experiences the outdoor uh, pursuits, walking and all the other, other activities that we can do outside. Uh, the animals she really enjoys if they approach her carefully and I just lean so she can actually touch them but she, she gets excited um, but she wriggles around in, in the sensory experiences but she really does enjoy it. So the sensory elements of our visits involve all the senses and uh, that is critical to the visits that we give people the chance to touch, smell, see, hear and taste. Uh, various things around the farm. Uh, this, there's a tremendous interaction if you can if you can achieve this, and people benefit from from all the senses. You can get in touch with participating farmers through the project's website. That's www.letnaturefeedyoursenses.org. Personally, I think it's a great scheme, and I hope you do too. And thanks for watching.